Hey guys, welcome to the channel and welcome back to another video, another live. So we're going to go live here and uh, talk about index funds. That's going to be the primary thing that we're going to be talking about is index funds. So let's see here. All right, good. All right, so we will be going live talking about index funds, talking about investing, talking about specifically you know, for beginners, guys, that's kind of what our focus is on this live is beginners that want to start, want to get going. And why beginners, guys? Well, because I've had a lot of comments in my on my YouTube channel and also emails. People just sending me emails saying, hey, I'm brand new at this investing thing. Can you help me? So, guys, as you come in here into the live stream, give me a thumbs up to let me know that you're actually here and you can hear me and my audio is coming through OK, because I've had some issues with the audio in the past couple of weeks. So just let me know that you can hear me and you can actually uh, all is well. And we're set now after you come in here and you do that, be sure you smash the, li the like button as well. Hit that like button because we want to actually get this information out to more and more people. This is sort of, hey. Which index funds should I choose? Should I invest in and why? Right. For beginners. And listen, if you're experienced and seasoned, you'll probably get a lot out of this also. Right. Most people that I find that follow me on YouTube and watch my YouTube lives, most of them are, you know, 30 to 40 years old, maybe just started investing five years ago, 10 years ago, haven't been in it very long, but just kind of learning. So if you're a seasoned investor, this will be good to you, for you as well. And let me know where you're checking in from. Jay from Madison, Wisconsin. Glad to have you. Appreciate you too, Jay. Um, appreciate that. Magris 903 from Toledo, Ohio. Thank you. Raymond from Dallas. Um, somebody said Vanguard. Just put that out there. Vanguard, right? Um, good to have you. Appreciate you guys being here. Let me know where you're coming from as you come into the live so I can see what city, what country, what county, what region, what continent you're on. Um, always like to know that, guys. Thank you, Mrs. Moore, for being here as always. Atlanta's in the house. Jackson, Mississippi, right up the right down the road from Batesville, Mississippi, right? Which is where I have a lot of family there. Arkansas is in the house. The UK is here. Good to have you, Donald. And uh, Quebec is here. Uh, Maddie from Quebec. Good to have you. East St. Louis is here. All right. Little Brooklyn down there in East St. Louis. Chicago is here. Uh, X music checking in from earth. Fantastic. I appreciate you. All right. If you had said Saturn, we might've had a problem there. X music we might think about that one, but he's checking in from earth or she's checking in from earth. Melissa's here from, uh, uh, Martinsburg, West Virginia. All right. Uh, let's see here. Memphis 10 is here. Memphis, Tennessee, Shelby County's in the house. Uh, San Francisco's here. As you guys know, sometimes on Thursdays, we'd like to talk specifically about ETFs and index funds. Today, I'm going to try to stay on ETFs. I'm sorry. I'm going to try to stay on index funds. But as you guys know, index funds and ETFs, they can kind of leak over to each other, right? Because they're super duper similar in a lot of ways. So just bear with me if we leak over into some ETF talk as well. Uh, San Francisco's in the house. Savannah, Georgia's in the house. I said, I'm sorry. Savannah, Georgia is in the house. Got to say that right. Dawson, Georgia is in the house as well. Uh, not making fun of down south uh, accents. I like down south accents, but as a voiceover artist, sometimes I got to change it up and do that. Uh, Kimmy's here from San Antonio. Good to have you. Detroit, Michigan is in the house. Uh, I forgot what county Detroit is, uh, but Detroit, Michigan's here. Montreal, Canada. Good to have you. Mexico is here. Good to have you. Uh, saludos to you too. Uh, from KC, good to have you. Southern Cal is in the house. And Gemini, how you doing, Gemini? Good to have you here. Virginia is here. So I appreciate you guys. Somebody from Tulsa is checking in too. I appreciate you from Tulsa. Um, so Thursdays at 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, we're here. Saturdays, 11 o'clock a.m., we're here. Oftentimes, I'll pop in and do another live throughout the week if there's something important going on. But I just want to talk on this video in general about index funds at first, and then we're going to get more specific into specific index funds um, that we want to talk about and go over and have a conversation about what's best, what's not best, et cetera. Rosie from St. Louis. So 
Then I want to give you some of my my favorites, the ones that I like, the ones that I invest in as well. We're going to talk about that a little bit at the end, and then we'll do a little bit of Q&A too. So this stuff about index funds, ETFs, you know, all that stuff, it seems a little complicated, guys, for a lot of people. And I get it. Look, totally get it, right? Especially if you're new or you're a beginner, right? Oh, by the way, smash the like button as you come in. We should have a We got about 50 people in and what normally happens on these lives is people get off work and five o'clock and 445, five o'clock, 515. We get more and more people. So as you come in, please smash that like button for me. Please share the link. If you know somebody that's thinking about investing and and wants to get started investing and wants to do common sense investing. Right. Not all fancy. You don't want to be picking individual stocks left and right. See, most people don't want to invest like that. Most people want to set it and forget it or set it and look at it every couple of weeks, every month. Right. That's why index funds is key. Index funds is wonder or wonderful for brand new beginning people. Right. People that are just now wanting to get their feet wet in the market. Index funds, ETFs, you cannot beat it. You cannot beat it doing that. So that's why these are important. But share the link to this video with someone who's interested in investing or starting to invest and just wants a more common sense, down to earth approach to it in plain language, not the fancy stuff, not the ticker symbols all over with the red and the breaking news. And no, just you want just a regular human being like them who wants to just talk about this stuff in a way that's easy to understand. Right. This stuff sounds complicated. Because they make it complicated on purpose. Full disclosure, you need to know this. They they make this stuff very, very complicated. Because the more complicated it is, the more they can charge you fees. Help you because you just don't understand it. You're so overwhelmed by it. Look, it is listen, it's 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 when you break it down into plain language, it's not very difficult to understand. But there's a lot of people that make a lot of money on keeping you ignorant about a lot of things, especially money, right? The more ignorant you are to investing, the more you'll say, oh, I want to invest, but I don't know what I'm doing. Let me go get a financial advisor that could ch- that can charge me a percentage of my growth or can charge me a flat $400 an hour fee or can charge me $10,000 for a course. This is why. They make it so complicated. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of intricacies to it, but it can be done very simply. It does not have to be something that's overly complicated, that's out of the out of everybody's purview, that we don't understand it. Oh, my gosh, this is too much for us. No, it's very understandable, right? But if they don't make it complicated, they can't make money. They can't make fees, right? So let me start by giving you just a couple of book recommendations. Oh. North Hollywood is here. Wayne County is Detroit. Shoal is. Shoal, S-H-O-L. Instead of sure is, Shoal is. Daryl's from North Carolina. Good to have you, Daryl. Uh, a couple of book rec- book recommendations for people that are brand new, right? The Little Book of Common Sense Investing, Jack Bogle. Jack Bogle is the person who invented, not invented, who started Index or uh, Vanguard. Uh, you heard of the, the, the company Vanguard. Jack Bogle started Vanguard in 1974, 75, and Vanguard introduced index funds to the world for the most part. They had been around before that, but they weren't very popular. Nobody liked them for 10 or 20 years before that. But Jack Bogle wrote that book. So check out that book when you get a chance. Another good book that I like is, is um, The Simple Path to Wealth. Simple. How do I get that in there? There you go. Simple Path to Wealth. Uh, your Roadmap to Financial Independence, J.L. Collins. Anything by J.L. Collins is pretty solid. Uh, I'm a fan of J.L. Collins. That's another one, Stock Market 101. You can check that out too. But just want to, if you're brand new, you want to kind of up your up your book game, right? You want to up your book game when it comes to investing. You want to figure out, hey, what's out there? What am I learning? Don't get me wrong now. You can't follow what's happening right now in the stock market by reading books that are reprinted, you know, five years ago. But you still can get a basic understanding just by picking up and up in your book game a little bit. Right. So I just want to show you those, just kind of break that down for you in terms of what you should be reading or things to think about reading. Right. Um, so let's, let's start off. What is a, what is a, uh, an index fund? 
And index funds is basically just a bucket of stocks, guys, right? Just a bucket of stocks or a bucket of commodities, bucket of bonds, whatever. It's a bucket. Some people call it a basket. I call it a bucket, right? And the bucket, these are a bunch of stocks that come from a specific segment, a specific sector, a specific reason that they're grouped together in this bucket, right? The segment or sector simply tracks the real life returns of what's happening in the real life stock market, right? Um, so the segment of stocks or the sector of stocks that are sitting in that bucket are called an index. And it can be formed by pretty much any group of stocks that you decide to choose, right? There's thousands of index funds out there, thousands of ETFs, right, that are out there as well. But for example, the S&P 500, the top 500 companies, top largest, biggest 500 companies or top 500 companies on the stock market right now, that's an index. That's a group of stocks that follow a certain segment of companies, the top 500 companies. That's an index. The Russell 2000, the Wilshire 5000, right? Total stock market. They follow an index. These are just examples of market index. But as we talk about this later, you'll see that indexes can come from a lot of different places, right? So how that bu uh, bucket, how that bucket of stocks or bonds or whatever you have in that bucket, in that bucket, however they perform is generally how the index fund performs, right? Any differences, we call that standard deviation or tracking errors, but we won't get into all that. No one is putting the funds in the bucket and taking the funds out of the bucket on a regular basis when you have index funds or ETFs. Nobody is taking and deciding, hey, maybe we should put that fund in. Maybe we should take that one in. Nobody's doing that with an index fund or an ETF. And that's why they call them passively managed as opposed to a mutual fund that's actively managed. Okay, that's the difference. You'll hear passive Passively managed. Passively managed means it's the bucket. It is what it is. It's there. It's going to track whatever index or sector that you want it to track. Don't have much management. Passively managed. Hands off. Actively managed funds, which charge you a higher uh, cost to own those funds, those are called active managed funds. And that's where you, you have a fund manager or two or three that are actively putting stocks in the bucket constantly, taking stocks out of the bucket constantly. And their goal, when you have an actively managed fund, their goal is to beat the market. Whereas an index fund's goal is to mirror the market. Two separate things, right? So by the way, an index fund is a type of mutual fund. So there's mutual funds, then there's ETFs and index funds, and all these are different types of mutual funds. The index fund is a type of mutual fund that follows an index, a group, right? And so a regular mutual fund is considered to be actively managed. Index funds and ETFs are, are mutual funds that are considered to be passively managed, right? So typically, typically, not all the time, but typically index funds will charge lower fees. When I say charge lower fees, I'm saying you will have to pay lower fees. It costs less to own an index fund than a regular actively managed mutual fund. Okay. So if you, let's say you have an index fund that tracks the S&P 500, that index fund is going to buy shares of stocks in all the companies that make up the S&P 500, right? I think it's up 506 companies, 507. Now, that index that you bought is going to mirror the entire S&P because you have the stocks from the entire S&P in your index fund. They should mirror it very, very closely, right? If the S&P goes up 1%, then your index fund that you have called the S&P index fund goes up 1% also. If the, if the S&P 500 goes down 1%, then guess what? Your index fund goes down 1% because your index fund is mirroring the S&P 500, those companies that are all those 500 plus companies in that bucket, right? That's kind of how index funds work, right? When that tracking, when they the, the tracking goes real well, right? Then you, you're said to have very, very few what they call tracking errors. There's not much deviation 
from each other. So with index funds, again, you don't need a fund manager who typically, guys, just so you know, and if you don't know this, I'll tell you, people that pick individual stocks, typically they do worse than index funds. Overall, there's been many, many studies over the years. Many places have studied this, you know, with precision to say that people that pick individual stocks don't do any better than people that pick index funds. In fact, they do a little worse. So it would behoove you that why most people don't invest in index funds. If index funds are typically outperforming these individual fund managers, why would you go have a fund manager manage it, pay that person more fees, and they lose to an index fund over the course of 5, 10, 15, 20 years, right? This is why I'm telling you index funds are really, really solid for the beginning investor. If you're new to investing, you don't know much about investing, you've never invested, you want to have an index fund, typically a broad based. And we'll talk about that in a bit. But typically those, those fund managers that receive all the fees, they just take up extra fees. That's why they kind of, that's why they're there. They're, they're in there in the middle right there. Guys, you know how capitalism works, right? Capitalism works as you create a, you create a, 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 a job market doing something that people could really do themselves, but you know, we want to generate more and more money in a capitalistic society. So we throw in these active managers, which 50, 60, 80 years ago was very difficult. And or if people thought it was very difficult to actually invest money. So they, they brought in all these managers to manage the, the fees and manage the monies and manage the finances. And this became a whole segment of people that take fees from mutual funds. You don't really need that necessarily. Right. And that's why I like index funds, because of the super duper low fees. Right now, full disclosure, index funds are not perfect. Any investment tool, I like to give you the real, not just a pie in the sky, everything's great, but every investment tool is going to have some, some problems, right? Some cons. And so there's some cons in terms of index funds. And we'll talk about them in just a moment here. Just looking at some of your comments here. Um, Dollar cost averaging in the VOO. Dollar cost averaging in the VOO. Long Beach, California in the house. Good to have you, Suave Robinson. Um, let's see, Clint Perry in Tulsa. Good to have you as well. KC in the house. Good to have you, Arthur. Uh, and VTI, right? VTI is a good one as well. We'll talk about that one. Richmond, Virginia. So let's talk about some of the problems with index funds, right? Some of the issues. And don't forget, smash the like button, right? We should have... Lots of likes going up in that in that in that that uh, that uh, live feed. I haven't even checked over here. And if you're if you're watching me on IG, cool. I'm 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 trying to check both. I'm I'm live on a bunch of spots, guys. Just bear with me. But so let's talk about the cons, the problems with index funds. And I'm trying to stay on index funds, not necessarily ETFs. So with index funds, guys, the one issue to, to, I say the one, there's several, but the one of the big issues to think about is that you can never outperform the market when you invest in index funds, okay? Because you, again, you're set to mirror the market. You're not aggressively investing to try to outperform the market and do better than the market, right? When you have an index, uh, I say a mutual fund, a regular mutual fund, not the index fund that's actively managed, they're actually out there trying to beat the market. And sometimes every now and then they beat the market, right? But your index fund is stuck performing as high as the market performs or as low as the bucket of stocks performs, right? You're kind of stuck with what is in the bucket. There's no adding to the bucket. There's no taking out of the bucket. You're stuck right there, which there's some good and bad in that too. But that's something to think about. Right. So it's sort of index funds sort of lack some of the flexibility that some of the more seasoned investors really like to start partaking in. Right. Because you, you, you're not moving stocks in and out the bucket as you see fit or as the as the as the mutual fund manager sees fit or according to the current market. Right. Because that's the that's one of the other problems with mutual funds is you can't start moving things around when the market starts going back, going, going bad. You're just stuck with what's in there. You can't just get rid of stuff and replace it with higher performing stocks. That's not how an index fund works. So you're stuck with what's there. That's not always a bad thing. 
That's why index fund investing is really a long term play. It's not a short term because we can look at chart after chart. I can pull up chart after chart on here of what the stock market has done. And when you pull up chart after chart, let me stop that from going. All right. When you pull up chart after chart, you see that over a five or 10 year period, the stock market does this goes up. But over the short six month, three month, eight month, one year, the stock market can be choppy, right? It can go up, go down, go up, go down, go up, go down, go up, go down over the course of the short term. But over the course of the long term, what's happening? Goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. Over the long term, it's gone up, right? That's why index fund is a long term play. It's not a short term play, right? The other thing about index funds is that there's really no, the other problem with index fund or con is that there's really no floor to the losses, right? In other words, when stocks go down and down and down and down inside of your bucket of stocks, there's no fund manager that can pull out a couple of companies that are doing horrible, right? During down markets, when something is actively manager managed, those, those funds, those mutual funds that are actively, actively managed can do a little better in down markets. Again, though, again, though, remember, down markets in the stock market typically are short term, right? Down markets don't last more than three or four or five or six or eight months. That's why short index funds are not short term plays, because in down markets, passively managed uh, index funds, they have to suffer whatever Whatever is going, you know, it's going down, 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 going right to the rock bottom, right? You can't do anything about that with index funds, right? Mutual funds, you can, regular mutual funds that's actively managed, you can, the manager will pick and pull and try to try to not hit that floor. But with an index fund, you're hitting the full floor. Now, keep in mind, though, what do we say about what do you do when, it, when, the, when the market dips? You keep buying. So you could look at index funds hitting the floor as being one thing, but if you're if you're dollar cost averaging into the markets and buying index funds regularly, then you're just buying more shares at a low price when it hits the floor. But and again, it does, floors don't last always in the stock market, right? So so you lose and you also lose some of the short term gains with the market volatility when you're in the index funds as well. So again, long term play, right? The other thing about index funds, I want to throw this out there that mo some of you may or may not know. You'd probably know this if you invest in mutual funds, especially say like a Vanguard mutual funds. Some mutual funds have a minimum in initial investment, right? Sometimes it could be $3,000. Sometimes it could be $10,000. Listen, there are some index funds that have minimums that are $100,000, right? In order to get into that index fund. So just keep that in mind. You got to do your research and check. always check if there's minimums to get into it. But sometimes there are, right? Some index funds like a VTSAX total stock market uh, from Vanguard, you got to pay $3,000 to even get in there, right? And then once you're in there, you can always buy as many shares as you want for, you know, 200, 300, whatever the shares are going for. But the point is there's a minimum to get in there in a lot of index funds. So keep that in mind. Those are the negatives of index funds. And I want you to be aware of the negatives. If you're a new investor, you need to understand that every single investment has its pros, has its cons, has its positive and has its ne negatives. Don't just listen to the people that get on YouTube and tell you all the wonderful things about in index funds. Well, there's some things that you got to think about before you invest in index funds that may make you pause, right? excuse me, or all the people that get on and tell you all the wonderful things about st buying individual stocks. Be careful about that, right? Because individual stocks are really hard to invest in, right? And we'll talk about that. Let's talk about some of the good of, in of index funds. And of course, we're going to get to some specific index funds because I want to show you guys a few things as well. So again, be sure you're smashing the like button. Be sure that you're copying the link, sharing with somebody. Be sure you check out my partner on this video, Mint Mobile, premium wireless services for less, okay? They use the world's highest, largest 5G network. And the good thing about Mint Mobile is it's it costs you less because at Mint Mobile, they don't have stores. They don't have salespeople at the box stores. 
Everything's done online. Excellent customer service. If you decide to go to Mint Mobile, I decided to go to Mint Mobile before I started partnering with them on my videos and they've worked out fantastic. Really enjoy Mint Mobile. So there's a link to Mint Mobile down there in the, in the description box as well. Also in the description box, there's some other free stuff. I got 24 Laws of Money, a free book, ebook that's free to, from me to you. 24 principles of money, 24 laws of money that are, that help me grow my wealth. So I share that with you guys in that book. If you want to click on that link in the description box below, I do one-on-ones, personal financial mentoring and coaching. There's a link to that as well. So check all that out in the description box. Let's keep rolling. So what is the good of index fund? What is the, the stuff that, yeah, I, I like that. I can hang my hat on that, right? So here's a few things to think about with index funds. First thing is this, the fees. I mean, and the fees are big. I'm going to go through a little example with fees here in just a bit, but the fees are huge, huge. The fees are low. And because the fees are very, very low, that's huge for why you would want to invest in index funds. Over the course of time, remember, index funds are a long play. Over the course of time, lower fees adds up. And I'm talking about time, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, lower fees makes a big, big difference, right? Um, you have lower risk involved with index funds, right? Lower risk because you're not investing in one stock. You're investing in 100 stocks, 80 stocks, 500 stocks, all at once, right? So when one goes bad, it don't mess up the whole bunch. But if you're only stuck in one stock, you bought Apple. Let's say you got four stocks. You bought Apple, you bought NVIDIA, you bought Tesla, right? Then if one of those goes down, let's say you bought four stocks and you're heavily invested in four stocks. If one of them tanks and goes bad, that's one fourth of your portfolio that's messed up, right? You don't really want that. You want to spread out your risk a little bit. And that's what index funds helps you do, right? Most index funds help you do that. And again, like I said, index funds typically over the course of years and years and studies have shown they do better than trying to sit there and, and pick individual stocks, right? The other beauty of index funds, and this is one of the reasons I really like it, is because index funds, how can I say this? They allow you to not be so smart and still do well in the, in the stock market. Index funds allow, they require less knowledge, right? Let me say it like that. It makes us sound better, right? They require less knowledge and less analyzing than, say, individual stocks, right? How do you, how do you figure out which, what company you want to buy, what individual stock you want to buy? You should be, if you're uh, investing in individual stocks, you should be doing your research on individual companies. That means reading a profit and loss statement. That means understanding the direction of the company. If you're invested in a company that, um, I don't know, name a company. If you invest in it, you should know, okay, maybe I should read the financials. Look at the 10Q. Look at the 10K of, of that company, right? That's if you're doing individual investing and you're doing it right, right? And there's a lot of things you want to look at, right? You want to check out what's going on with the company, what you want to maybe attend some of the uh, quarterly meetings so you can listen to the CEO address shareholders, right? You want to do all this investing in an individual company. A lot of people don't do it like that. And that's why a lot of people lose their shirt when they invest, right? But that's how you really want to be investing in an individual company, right? Understanding the trajectory of the company, what their projections are looking like, what is happening with their balance sheet, right? What, what's going on with their assets? What's going on with their upcoming emerging technologies that may be happening in the company? Whatever it may be, right? We can go on and on for how you should be analyzing an individual company. You ain't got to do none of that when it comes to an index fund. If you buy an index fund and it's got a thousand companies in there, you ain't got time to go through every single one of those companies. You don't need to. Because investing in an index fund requires less knowledge of each of us, right? And that's a good thing, right? There's only a few things you want to be looking at when you're actually doing, when you're actually um, investing in an index fund. The other thing about an index fund is it's, it's convenient, right? I mean, think about it. You're, you love the, the uh, healthcare sector, right? Let's say you're a, a nurse or a doctor and you enjoy the healthcare sector and you want to invest in some stocks. Instead of going out and finding 
25 or 40 or 50 healthcare stocks, you can get them all in one bucket. You don't have to do all that leg work. You can get, all, get them all in one bucket. Let's say you work for your local energy company and you understand the energy space. You go out and buy you an index fund or ETF that is all energy companies, right? Or if it's oil, oil, buy an index fund with all the oil companies, right? It's convenient. You don't have to shop around for all these companies. You can just grab you a bucket, period. Right? Sound like I'm talking about Kentucky Fried Chicken. Just grab you a bucket. No, grab a bucket of stocks called an index fund, right? Convenient. And the other thing is that it removes all of the guesswork. Like I said earlier, less knowledge. You don't have to be, listen, I don't know enough to pick the winners. I'm not some guru who's going to come on here and say, this is what you got to do. Hey, oh, this is looking good. This is an indicator. I'm not that good. I don't even want to be that good. <laughs> I want to I want to kind of be hands off. I don't want to be checking the market every day. I do check it every day because I talk to you guys, but I don't want to be checking the market every single day and it's kind of like when I used to play fantasy football years ago, right? Checking fan listen, playing fantasy football. If you ever play fantasy football, it makes the regular football NFL, which I don't watch the NFL anymore. This is back in the days. But it makes watching the NFL harder because you're more stressed and you have more anxiety and you're more worried about, man, did he catch that ball? Did he get the first down? How's my defense looking? How's the quarterback? What's his percentage right now? How many completions? How many touchdowns? How many interceptions? You can't even enjoy the game because you focus so much on all these individual things. The same thing happens with the stock market. When you're invested highly and you have a lot of, you know, input into one or two stocks, three or four stocks, guess what? It becomes less enjoyable right? Less enjoyable. I would rather be hands off. Have a few index funds, have a few ETFs, you know, have a few little stocks if you want to play around that way, but have most of my investing in stock in index funds. That's what I think is more enjoyable for the average person, especially for beginners, right? The other thing that I like about index funds, I'm giving you a lot, but I hope you guys can absorb all this. Um, is that you get to, you get a chance to benefit from the winners and the losers don't affect you as much okay not to mention there's less volatility right when one stock is doing poorly it doesn't necessarily affect the whole fund now i know we have like the S&P 500 uh index funds that are cap weighted heavily weighted and we'll talk about that in a second but for the most part when one goes bad it doesn't give you a it doesn't drag down everything right unlike individual stocks, right? And keep in mind, guys, listen, if you want to invest in stocks and in index funds at the same time, that's cool too. Nothing wrong with that, right? But I like to have a bulk of my money more so in index funds as opposed to the individual stocks, right? Um, let's see, anything else? Um, index funds typically have no contribution limits. Uh, they have no withdrawal restrictions, right? You can withdraw what you want to withdraw. Um, and you get to benefit from top companies doing well without all the work of picking individual stocks, right? So here's what I review typically when I look at index funds. I talked about it earlier. I mentioned it earlier that, hey, you don't have to do all that scrutinizing, looking at 10Ks and 10Qs. 10Ks and 10Qs are just reports from individual stock companies, right? That's all they are. So first of all, when I look at an index fund, I look at what benchmark it's tracking, right? What group of what group or sector that is tracking. Um, I might glance at tracking errors. I don't glance too heavily or spend much time on tracking errors, but I just kind of glance at them because typically that'll be shown when you're doing a, a, a review of it on whatever website you do your reviews, right? Um, the third thing that I look at is expense ratios, right? What it costs to own the fund. What does it cost to own it, Right. Uh, and by the way, guys, if and I'll get to a little Q&A. If you have a question, drop a Q in there and I'll, I'll backtrack and look at the, the, the chat here in a bit. But we're talking about expense ratios. OK, so I do look at how much it costs to own the fund without going into a whole bunch of particulars. The lower, the better. All right. Point three, point three zero, zero point three zero expense ratio means that you're going to pay for every ten thousand dollars you got invested. It's going to be 30 bucks that you pay to own the fund, the cost, the annual cost to own the fund, right? 
uh, 0.04. Sometimes a lot of what in the index funds again have low again have low fees. So 0.04 four dollars, right? That's not much. Four four bucks a year, right? So the overall gist of that is that fees really really matter, especially over time. Excuse me. The more you pay in fees the less money you have because the fees come out of your returns. When you're talking about mutual funds and ETFs and index funds, the fees come out of your returns. So you want low fees, right? Let me look at this example. I should bring it up on my screen. I'm going to look at this example real quick, guys, and just sh share with you. There was a study done and I'll read it off to you guys. 40 years, there it is right there, 40 years if you invest for 40 years, $1,000 a month, I know that sounds like a lot, but just bear with me on this example. If you invest it for 40 years, $1,000 a month, and you get a 9% return, you'd have about $7.2 million in 40 years, right? Now, with a 0 0.05 expense ratio, a 0 0.05 cost of owning that, whatever you invested in, 0 0.05 expense ratio over 40 years investing 1000 a month at a 9% annual return, $7.2 million, you would lose about $100,000 in fees. Not much with a $7.2 million balance in 40 years. So you would have at the roughly at the end of that 40 years, you wouldn't have 7.2 million, you'd have 7.1 million because you only paid 0 0.05 in fees as an expense ratio. Now, contrast contrast that with this. Same 40 years of investing, same same $1,000 per month investing, same 9% net return a return on your investment annually. Still grew to $7.2 million, right? $7.2 million over 40 years. But if you had a 1% expense ratio instead of a 0 0.05, if you had a 1% expense ratio. Over the course of that 40 years, you would lose about $1.9 million in fees over 40 years. So instead of having 7.2 million, you'd have what? 5.3 million. $5.3 million in 40 years after your money grew to 7.2, but you got to pay fees of 1% expense ratio. Not the 0 0.05, like I told you before, but just that difference in expense ratio over four years made a $1.8 million difference. So I just wanted to give you that, that example to show you how important low fees are, especially primarily over the long haul, right? It's very important. So expense ratio is really the primary thing you want to be looking at when you're investing in index funds, right? That's a really, really important thing. Sure, you can glance at the tracking errors. You can check out. Obviously, you want to know what benchmark that it's tracking and what the holdings are in the bucket, the companies in the bucket. But you really got to know what your fees are. The lower, the better. Very important. So the other things you want to look at when you're trying to buy an index fund is you want to obviously look at the market price. What is a share running for? Is it $100, $200, right? You can look at the past performance, keeping in mind that past performance is not going to be an indicator of future of, of what happens in the future. But past performance is something you want to look at. And with index funds, I don't focus too much on the the one year. I look at more the three year, five year, 10 year lifetime of, of the mutual of the uh, index fund itself. Right. So those are some things you want to be looking at. But you always want to be dollar cost averaging. Right. A uh, uh, dollar cost averaging. The simple definition for that is is just putting in a set amount of money over a long stretch of time con consistently. That's all dollar cost averaging really means. That no matter what happens in the market, good, bad, up, down, bear, bull, bull bear, doesn't matter. You just keep putting that $100 a month. Keep putting that $500 a month. Keep plugging in you know, $1,000 every two weeks, whatever it may be. That's dollar cost averaging over time as opposed to trying to time the market. Get your money in, get your money out. Don't do that. Dollar cost average over a long period of time, right? It mitigates your loss, your loss, right? You want to do this over a long stretch. So by the way, 
when you invest in index funds and your dollar cost average, you're all you're really saying, guys, let's break this, let's break this thing down to its basic. All you're really saying to yourself is that I think the American businesses are going to, they're going to be just fine over the long course over the next 20, 30 years. I think American businesses are going to continue to grow. If you believe that to be true, Dollar cost averaging into an index fund is exactly what you want to be doing, right? And I always, I, I never fail to mention when we talk about um, investing or index funds or ETFs, I don't want to, I don't want to forget the basics. I always mention them on every video, guys, because they're very important. The basics of long-term investing, right? Know your why. Why are you in it? Develop and write down your plans. That's number two. Write down your plan, your investment plan. Number three is be consistent, right? As I said. DCA, dollar cost average. Number four is invest in things that you understand. If you don't understand the energy sector, don't get an energy index fund, okay? If you don't really understand what the S&P 500 is, don't get an S&P 500 index fund. Only, only when you understand it should you invest in it. Number five is risk what you can afford to lose. I always tell folks to stretch yourself when you're investing for the long term, right? Um, the other thing, number six, is make sure you're diversified. Index funds do that for you. And number seven is stop panicking. Don't panic. Don't trip. Don't get upset. Don't get crazy. Don't panic. All right? Time, as Jack Bogle said, right? Time is your friend when it comes to investing in the stock market. Impulse is your enemy. That's a quote from Jack Bogle. Time is your friend. Impulse is always going to be your enemy. Let's talk specifics real quick. AI. Is there a good AI index fund ETF out there? AI is huge right now. And if you've invested in any type of technology stocks, you know, in the last year, two years, why AI is huge, right? AI ETFs are out there, right? Now, the firm that I, the platform I'm on, Vanguard, they don't really have a dedicated AI ETF or dedicated AI index fund. But if you're thinking about index funds and you want to get something that's a little more trendy, may have some volatility to it, go up and down, You and it's been up for a while now. You may look at AI ETFs or AI or heavy ETFs and index funds that invest heavy in technology. For me, me personally, I like I like VGT from Vanguard, right? Informa it's, it's Vanguard's Information Technology ETF, but I still like it, although it's an ETF. Remember I said I'm going to cross up ETFs and index funds a little bit, so bear with me. But you got... AI, you got, you know, ETFs, you got iShares, you got IRBO, I think is one, uh, BOTZ, somebody said AIQ. I'm looking in the chat here, guys, if you know AI ETFs, because I want people to be able to go back to this video and look at the chat and say, man, let me look at the chat. A lot of stuff is lighting up in that chat. If you know of an AI or heavy, heavy tech AI ETF index, let us know. Drop it in the chat, guys. Drop it in the chat. If you're not watching me on YouTube, you might want to go over to YouTube. YouTube always, we always have a lot of super duper smart investors that have come on my channel, and I appreciate you guys being here and, and helping out. Let's see. Somebody said, and I'm going back and look at some of the chats right here. Somebody said <laughs> Mint Mobile for the win. Yeah, Mint Mobile is real solid and it's less, it's very inexpensive. Um, VTI, somebody said VTI is up 60 points in the last six months. That's huge. Uh, let's see here. Uh, check the logic. Good to have you in here. BHTVNE, somebody threw out there. Investing is common sense. Yep. Do you have to pay Tesla? Somebody said, uh, let's see here. A little, I got a bunch of them that ran right through me. A little, okay, where's it at? Somebody said, if you want to set your kids up right now, you need to start teaching now how to invest their money right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, come blessing. Somebody said, would I, would I replace my position in VYM, which I do own VYM at Vanguard. That's more of a dividend, uh, high yield dividend uh, index fund or ETF. Uh, would I replace my position in VYM with VIG instead? Um, no, I like VYM for a long play, to be honest with you, because I always reinvest those dividends. VIG is cool, right? And we can look up some of these ticker, ticker symbols as they come in, by the way. Um, I would I would say with I'm I'm sticking on BYM right now. For a beginner, how much would be a good amount to start investing? Sandy Axe, Sandy, you start investing with whatever whatever you feel like you can afford to lose, right? But I wouldn't be putting a whole lot into investing if I haven't also paid off some debt and got my emergency fund together as well. So whatever you can lose above those things, 
you decide you make that decision. It's tough. Everybody's a little different. For some folks, it's two thousand. For some folks, it's two hundred dollars. Right. Somebody said VGT for the win. I'm, I'm skipping over some of them, but I'm trying to get to most of them. Check the logic said SP. What is SPY? SPY is Charles Schwab's uh, version of let's pull up SPY real quick. SPY is your yeah, S&P 500. That's Charles Schwab's version of S&P 500. So appreciate throwing that SPY out there. Let's see. Somebody said v, Richard Fain stopped investing in VGT. Yeah, that's cool. I'm a VGT guy, right? So I like VGT. I'm going to stick with it, right? Um, somebody said FR, FGR, oh, let's see. FTEC just offers a lower barrier to entry. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times you'll see that Vanguard has these higher barriers to entry for some of its uh, index funds, right? Minimum investments. Let's see here. Somebody said AIQ again. Let's see what AIQ is. I'm going to pull up AIQ real quick and just see what AIQ is and what platform offers it? AIQ is the Global Artificial Intelligence Technology ETF. Yeah. Um, AIQ. Hmm. Okay. It's gone up a lot over the last year, and it's only trading at $33 per share right now. That Global X Artificial Intelligence and Technology is what AIQ is. Not a bad, not a bad one to look at. I appreciate you throwing that out there. Several of you threw that out there. Um, let's see. Uh, somebody said SCHD. I think SCHD is Schwab's version of uh, VYM. If you're on, I'm, we're throwing out these letters, guys. If you're brand new, these are ticker symbols that you could type into any Google and pull them up. But SCHD is Schwab is version of a high dividend uh, index fund or ETF. Okay, and I'm just looking at a few things that you put up here, guys, for growth. There's SOX, SOXX, and SOXQ is better. Not bad, not bad. Let's see here, FXAIX. We're throwing out a bunch of them. So let me just kind of run through some that I like, right? You've got so many different types of index funds. If you're new to index funds, understand you have so many different types, right? There, you know, you might have heard of the Nifty 50 or the Magnificent Seven, Magnificent, Magnificent Seven, right? But you have those out there, right? You have U.S. bond index funds, right? So, you know, you can, you can, you don't have to invest and in, have just stocks in the bucket. You could have debt in the, in the bucket and not just stocks in the bucket. You could have debt in the bucket, right? Like the uh, Barclays aggregated U.S. bond index, right? Some people like to have a split in their overall portfolio, investment portfolio, where they're say 80% equities or 80% stocks and index funds and 20% bonds, especially as you get older, that might turn to more 70-30 or more 60-40, right? When I say 60-40, I'm talking about 60% stocks or index funds and ETFs and 40% bonds, right? Because the bonds are less volatile in the short run, right? Bonds don't bond ETFs don't offer the same type of higher returns that regular ET uh, e index funds offer, but the bond index funds or the bond ETFs they offer you a little more stability, but less volatility and less returns, less risk. Right. So as you get older, some people like to change their the pie of their portfolio around to be less risky meaning more bonds. So don't slip on the fact that if you're an older person, you can invest in bond ETFs or bond index funds as well, right? Um, uh, BLV, I think is one at Vanguard, which I'm not a big fan of BLV, full disclosure, BLV, got a little bit in BLV, not much, but then you have like BMOAX, right? And there's other ones in terms of bonds, but don't, think that you only have to have stocks in that bucket. You can have bonds in that bucket too. Um, you've got international index funds, right? Companies that are outside the U.S. Um, and I'm not a big fan of, of internationals, by the way, because I think that the exposure that I get through international companies in my index funds are enough international. So I don't specifically go international. Um, some people do, but when people, when you hear people say U.S. equities, equity index funds, they're just talking about stocks. Okay, um, then you have like value index funds. I'm naming the different types of index funds. You have value index funds that are not so big on trying to get a lot of growth. 
but they're more long-term stable companies, like say like an AT&T is a value uh, uh, company. And if you have a bunch of AT&T's, companies like AT&T, then you have a value index fund, right? A bunch of those type of companies in the bucket. Less volatility, more stable, et cetera. You might have heard of growth index funds, right? That's another type of index fund, right? Growth funds are, they sort of look at the stock market and say, hey, these are funds in this bucket. These are stocks in this bucket that are going to, that are expected to grow faster than normal, right? So they're big on growth, right? There may be a little more uh, volatility. When I say volatility, that just means way up, way down, way up, way down. There may be a little more volatility in growth index funds, right? These are companies that are expected, again, to grow faster than normal. And they're going to be focused on the, like, you know, emerging companies, right? That's going to, that has the, the prospects of having high growth, right? You can have blend. When you look on Vanguard's website, you can blend the two, the growth and the value all together. Um, so there's all different types of, of index funds. There's total stock market index funds, right? The ones that cover the entire stock market. So you could buy the stock market, right? In an index fund, you just buy the stock market, Right. Or there's very broad market index funds. There's market capitalization funds. We didn't talk about those. Those are index funds. There's large cap index funds, mid cap and small cap. Cap is the, the size of the company pretty much, right? The larger the cap, the larger the company, right? There's, 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 there's when I say cap weighted funds, there's index funds where um, it depends on the size of the company. They take up most of the bucket, right? So like the S&P 500 is a cap weighted fund. So there's only like 10 companies, although there's 500 companies, 10 companies make up 30% of the S&P 500 because it's weighted on it, it, the cap. The size of the company mirrors the size that it takes up in the bucket, if that makes any sense. So and then you have equal weighted index funds too, where everything in the bucket has the same weight, right? You've got all different types of index funds. You have sector specific index funds, right? You can just buy a, a bucket of stocks that has financial companies in it. You can buy a bucket of stock that has construction companies in it. You can buy a bucket of stock that has communication companies in it, right? You can get all these different types of index funds or ETFs. As I said earlier with VYM, you can buy a bucket of stocks that has high yield dividend companies in it, companies that typically pay a high dividend. You can have all of them in one bucket. That's the convenience of index funds, right? Right? BYM, BYMI, right? So you can have, and again, we said bonds. Bonds are fixed incomes, fixed income index funds, right? You can even do this, guys. Watch this. This is how, how interesting index funds are, ETFs are. You can have socially responsible index funds. Have you heard of those, right? Anybody heard of, have you heard of socially responsible index funds? Those are index funds or, or ETFs that focus on um, environment friendly companies in the bucket or uh, companies that are, that are space, that pay specific attention to uh, social issues in the bucket. Or you could have companies that exclude the sale of firearms, alcohol, and adult entertainment or gambling in the bucket, right? So like, it, like I think Vanguard has one called ESVG, right? Socially Responsible Index Fund. BlackRock has a couple of those as well. So there's all different types of index funds. That's the beauty of investing in index funds, right? Right? Of course, you can have the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ, the, 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 the Dow Jones, right? Those are index. Russell 3000, Russell 1000. Right. So there's all different types that you can have, guys. That's why index funds are neat. They're efficient and they're really, really solid for the beginning investor. Now, for me, I'm an S&P 500 index person. S&P 500 is the 506 or 505 largest companies. Right. There's VFIAX. There's SWPPX, if you're over on Charles Schwab, which SPY and SPYV are the ETFs. We're talking index funds. There's F FXAIX. Let me do this. Let me share my screen with you guys real quick. 
maybe I don't know. I don't know if you'll see this on the um, IG, but I'm going to share my screen real quick. I'm going to show you guys. I think I left up a little comparison I had earlier. Let me show you this real quick. Since we're talking those larger VTSAX, right? VTSAX, well, we haven't got to those yet. <clears throat> Let's not pull this one up yet. Let's pull up the other one. This one from here. We'll go to this one. Let's see. Okay. What I pulled up on the screen, guys, is just a comparison. And let me make myself, let me make myself really small. This is just a comparison of <clears throat> FX AIX. Um, which is, these are, by the way, these are S&P 500. Um, Schwab, SWPPX, Vanguard's FVF, IAX. So these are total, these are five, these are S&P 500 index funds from the three major platforms where you can purchase these or that offer these. Vanguard, Schwab, and Fidelity. And I like to, this is actually on Fidelity's website where I can, you can compare, there's a lot of different websites you can compare. But when you compare those three, I bring this, I want to bring this up, this point up, because this is pretty important. If you notice, these are um, all large blend, similar returns. Here they are on the map, and you can't see a difference because they all track the same thing. I wanted to bring these three up to say this. If you're new, you didn't know this. If you buy an S&P 500 index fund from Fidelity, you don't have to go and buy an S&P 500 index fund from Schwab, right? Because they're going to be the same companies. They're all invested in the S&P 500. There's something called overlap, right? Now, I could show you this differently in a different, if I add another symbol or add another deal. But overlap means that the 500 companies that are in this bucket are the same 500 companies in this bucket. They're the same 500 companies in VFIAX, right? So you don't have to buy similar. You always want to look at equivalents and similar depending on what um, platform that you're on or wh who you want to buy it from. Just be careful about overlap, right? Getting the same stuff in different places. I'd be wasting money if I put had a, um, a hundred thousand dollars in VF, v, I'm sorry, in FXAIX, and then I took another hundred thousand dollars and put it in SWPPX over at Schwab, right? Doesn't matter. It's the same thing, right? So Fidelity has a nice little tool that you can do some comparison to. The one thing I don't like about Vanguard is they have a horrible comparison tool. I don't like their graphics nearly as well as I like Fidelity and Schwab. But I'm mostly over on Vanguard. So I come over to Fidelity and Schwab and look at their comparison tools because I like them better. But so that's something to think about. But some of those in terms of Vanguard, some of those that I like, me specifically, I like. I like the VFIAX. It has a minimum $3,000 uh, to get into it. But the ETF only, you know, doesn't have a minimum. VOO is the equivalent, right? If you're at, if you want a uh, S&P 500, index front fund from Schwab. That's the SWPPX. No minimum for that though. But the equivalent ETF is SPY or SPYV, SPY I think it is. Um, and then if you're on Fidelity, again, I just showed you FXAIX is the S&P 500 index fund on Fidelity. Now, all those platforms also have total market index funds as well, right? So over on um, uh, Vanguard, it's FTSAX. FTSAX and it's it's ETF equivalent is VTI. But again, VTSAX over on Vanguard, it has a three thousand dollar minimum just to get into it. Right. Um, the equivalent to that total stock market index fund on Schwab is SWTSX. SWTSX on Schwab. There's no minimum to get into that index fund. Now, the equivalent to, on Schwab, I think, is SCHB. That's the ETF 
of the Vanguard, I'm sorry, of the Schwab Index Fund SWTSX. Now, the Fidelity Total Stock Market Fund is FSKAX. FSKAX. Let me share my screen with you. I think I have those pulled up just to show you because some folks, you know, I've been talking a lot and some folks like to see it. So I think I did pull them up. I showed you a second ago over on Schwab. But over on Schwab, if you take a look at my screen, if you're over here on YouTube, um, you've got your, there they are, VTSAX, there's the Fidelity, and there's the, again, if you look at them, guys, they mirror each other. You don't have to have VTSAX over on Vanguard and go over to, uh, you know, Fidelity and pick up F, F, FSKAX. You don't need that, right? Because they're just about the same thing, okay? But again, this is this is actually Schwab, and I like Schwab's uh, comparison tools as well. Easy, user-friendly, right? You can actually expand and look at the holdings, the top 10 holdings in each one of these, which is pretty solid, and they're pretty comparable. So, um, and these are cap-weighted, by the way. Those S&Ps that I shared with you earlier, and these total stock market index funds, they're all cap-weighted, meaning that the larger 10 holdings are going to hold a bigger place in the bucket. So just want to show you that over there as well, too, guys. And I, I like sharing my screen a little bit every now and then because everybody doesn't like uh, just hearing me talk. But that's kind of why I like index funds, guys. Index funds rule, in my opinion. And I could go on and share a whole bunch. I think you guys in the chat have actually put a whole bunch in there. So if you're watching this on rerun, check out the chat box. Lots of good information in there. Somebody said, uh, let's see here. Oh, thank you for the super chat, Sandy. I appreciate it. Sandy said, Sandy Perez, thanks for the $10.999 super chat. Thanks for all your videos. I've learned so much. Keep them coming. You're welcome. You're welcome. I appreciate you uh, sending me that super chat. Man, I appreciate it more than you know. Just looking back through some of the super, some of the uh, chats that you guys have here. I just want to run back through those guys. Let's see, somebody said SPY for the win. QGRW, heard some good things about that one as well. Hucklebuck said FTEC, FTEC offers you lower barrier to entry. Absolutely. Always want to check and see what the minimums are, guys. When you're over on Vanguard, again, over on Vanguard, you got some index funds that have a minimum of $100,000, right? Just flat out, minimum of $100,000, right? They ain't even playing for you to get into that, that one, right? Uh, let's see. Somebody said SCHD. Somebody said, I do QGRW, $5 a week. Hey, better. Hey, you. Hey, it's a start. It's a start. Uh, somebody said, I don't want any dividends unless you're ready to retire. I don't take my dividends. I reinvest all dividends right now at this point as well. I don't need the extra $500, $200, $800,000 a month. I just put it right back in. Um, you'll learn, especially if you read a book like this, you'll learn in this book right here and many other books that, you know, the sheer compounding effect of uh, dividends, it'll make you want to keep them, keep them in there. Um, let's see. Somebody said AIQ, it could be trendy. Yes. AIQ, the one we showed you earlier, could be a little bit trendy. Uh, somebody said, are bonds worth it? Could be. Listen, bonds get a bad rap. They really do. Bonds get a bad rap. But if you're 65 years old and you don't want to play with the volatility in the market, you know, bonds offer you, you know, a 2%, 1%, 3% return that's very, very safe. And for some folks, that's okay. If you go back and look at, you know, Warren Buffett or some of the other famous guys that invest, famous investors, you'll see that a lot of them say, hey, a 90-10 split as you get older is not bad. 90% in the in equities and 10% in bonds, right? Sometimes you hear a 70-30 split, 60-40, split, right? Just depends, right? Let's see here. Somebody said... Uh, Margin house call. I'm not an options trader. I don't do options, guys. I'm not, I'm not I don't do uh, options. So I'm not going to, I'm not, I don't dig heavy into those things, guys. But I appreciate that comment, that question. Uh, somebody said, um, nothing more stable than the S&P 500. Look, you can't get wrong with, you can't go wrong with the S&P 500. It's a new investor, new beginner. You can't go wrong. Uh, somebody said, I don't invest in bonds, personal decision. Nothing wrong with that. That's okay. Uh, let's see here. VTI total stock market. Um, somebody said, is it dumb to own both FX? I went back a little bit. FX, AIX, and the total stock market. FX, AIX, what is FAA? It's, that's the Fidelity 500. I think that's S&P 500. If I'm right, let me know. Um, you don't have to own the total stock market and the S&P 500, typically. 
Because typically, if you own the to a total stock market um, index fund, it's going to have the 500 in there already. And it's all it's weighted too, right? The S&P 500 FXAIX is, is a, I think it's a, a cap-weighted fund, which means the top seven, NVIDIA, AI, um, NVIDIA, Alphabet, Meta, uh, Amazon, they're going to be heavily weighted in the S&P 500, in the F FXAIX. Well, if they're, if they're weighted there and then you're going to go buy a total stock market and they're weighted there, you're kind of doubling up. You're, 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 you're experiencing a lot of overlap, in my opinion. So I, that's something I probably wouldn't do. A total stock market index fund and an S&P 500 index fund is probably overkill. That's my opinion. Um, VTI total stock market. Let's see here. Somebody said, um, never heard of it. Okay. I'm just looking back through a little bit before that. All right. Cute. What about only investing in S and P 500? Mrs. Moore, there is, I don't, in my opinion, and I think in the opinion of people like Jack Bogle or Warren Buffett, if that's all you ever did was invest only in an S and P 500 index fund or an S and P 500 ETF, I think you'll be just fine. I think you'll be just fine. Because if the S&P 500 messes up, we're all in trouble and America's going down. You should have your passport. So if that's all you invest in is an S&P 500, I think you're going to be okay. Especially to start, right? Nothing wrong with it at all. Let's see. Somebody said, Mrs. Moore, you can't go wrong. They said the same thing I said. Yep. Hello from St. Louis. Let's see. Mommy Trader in the house. You guys check out her uh, channel if you can. Mommy Trader. Looks like she's growing. I think she's growing a lot. And uh, she offers good information over there on her channel. So if you're here, check out Mommy Trader. T-A-R-D-E-R. -E uh, thanks for being here. Mutual. Hopefully you got dinner ready, Mommy Trader. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, somebody said mutual funds versus ETFs. I like ETFs over regular mutual funds because of the lower fees. I don't like regular mutual funds. I like index funds or ETFs because of the lower fees. Okay. Memphis 10 in the house. Good to have you. VTI is the only fund my special son need, my special needs son knows about. VTI. Okay, good. He only, he knows about VTI already. Fantastic. Good for him. Let's see here. Um, QGRW is gold rated. Uh, let's see. Bonds don't grow. Yeah, bonds. When you invest in bonds, you're investing in debt. Basically, right? Uh, let's see. That's why they call they call bonds fixed income. If you see something that says a fixed income ETF or fixed income uh, index fund, that's a bond index fund, okay? Because it's fixed, right? Um, let's see here. Getting let's see. Let's see. Hope you feel better, mommy trader. Hope you feel better. Absolutely. So, somebody said I'm thinking about creating a custodian broker account for my kids and buy fractional ETFs, either spy or vu vu. They make about a net one hundred a month from rental income. Oh, that's not bad. Making a hundred dollars a month from rental income and investing in ETF, perfect, great. Um, somebody said I'm just learning, but hearing great things about ETFs. Yes, ETFs are great. ETFs are index funds. The only difference is that ETFs can be traded throughout the day, and their price sort of fluctuates throughout the day, right? ETFs are traded just like stocks, right? Traded throughout the day. Index funds, you're not trading them throughout the day. You're buying them at the price that they were at the close of business. So they're a little bit different, but they're very, very similar, right? Index funds, ETFs, I like them both. Uh, I'm an index fund guy, but I like a lot. I have a lot of ETFs as well. Let's see. And again, I'm not a big international guy. I don't like, because I figure that all of my American stuff are global companies, right? Most of them are global companies. And so they, that's my exposure to the international market as opposed to getting international index funds or an international ETF. So guys, I hope I was able to help you guys with something, at least if you're a starter, a beginner, understanding, you know, which index funds to look at and how to choose them and, and, and really, really how to scrutinize them and what you should be looking for, the pros, the cons. I like to do these sort of introductory, um, uh, lives about index funds because it's hard to fit all this in a quick video, a 10 minute video. I could do that, but 
I like the interaction and I like you guys being able to express yourself and ask questions along the way. So very, very good to have the lives. If you got any value from this, I need you to hit the like button for me. There's a thumbs up button at the bottom of this. Please just hit that thumbs up button for me and do me a favor and share the link. Everybody sitting here in this in the, on this video right here, all of you know at least one or two other people that are thinking about invest, investing or don't know a whole lot about investing and want to learn more, share this link with them so that we can pass along good information. When you hear good information, don't hoard it and keep it to yourself. When you see a good video that gives out good, solid information that's easy to understand about a sometimes a complex uh, subject like investing in index funds, please share that with other people, right? Very much so. Let me see here. Somebody said, no crypto. Somebody said, I don't invest in international bond funds. Bronx, New York in the house. Bronx, New York. Uh, yes, sir. You have definitely answered my questions. Thank you. I'm glad I could help you. Strictly business. Um, somebody said, I'm trying to teach one of my students and get my coworker on board. Yes. More people need to hear videos like these videos and videos that Mommy Trader puts on her channel and Richard Fain puts on his channel, right? All these people that are talking regular investing stuff in easy to play, easy to understand plain language and, can, and you can identify with these people. That's who you need to be really focusing on and listening to to grow your knowledge base about investing. Right. Very, very important. I mean, I'm contributing in my TSP. My employer matches five percent. So I generally contribute 10 percent each month when the market is doing well. I will increase my contribution to 25 just keep it at 25%. Don't go up and down. Just keep it at 25%. Keep it at 20%. Dollar cost average at 20% of your, of your money. So that's my video for today, guys. That's my video. I got free stuff in the description box below. Please check it out. I appreciate you guys being here. I told myself this was going to be a 30-minute live, and guess what? Turned into an hour live because I had a lot of information I wanted to share with you guys. And that's okay. Not a problem. And also check out other videos that I put out talking about money, money management, money mindset. That's huge as well, as, as, as well as these investment videos as well. So I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much for showing up. We're going to do this live again Saturday at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Be there. What's the old saying, right? Be there, be square, right? That's corny, right? But Come check us out, right? Don't forget to share the video, guys, and check out the stuff I got in the description box. I appreciate you being here. As I always say, the best person who's going to take care of that old you is the young you. Take care of yourself and take care of other people. Until the next video, peace.